Welcome to another episode of Ask Sam, the show about sex, relationships, and everything about people. In this episode, we're going to answer the question, why does every relationship have to start with physical attraction? Right? Everybody asks this. Here's the truth. The first thing is, they don't. That is not a necessity. It's, it's not the way that it is. But there is a reason that you think so, and that's because the majority of relationships are going to start based on physical attractiveness. Probably not the best ones, and we'll talk about that in another episode. But I do want to answer why almost all relationships start with physical attraction or any potential relationships. Okay, so let's start. How are you going to meet people? Where are you going to go to meet them? Let's say you're on Tinder or you're on OkCupid okay, or you're going to a bar or maybe you're walking past uh, in the mall, right? It could be almost anywhere. Maybe you're on the beach or you're in a restaurant. The initial uh, interaction that you're going to have with somebody is going to be from a distance. And the only reason that you're normally going to interact with someone more than walking past them or simply ignoring them uh, in whatever place you are or swiping left on Tinder is because you find them physically attractive, at least enough to generate more interest to find out more. Just because a physical attraction initiates the reason for having more of, a rea of an interaction does not imply that it is only a physical thing. Physicality is quite simply the only thing that we have to initiate any interaction on a normal basis. If you go to a singles bar and you're sitting at the bar and someone walks up to you, they had nothing to go on except for what you look like and how you're dressed, unless someone tells them something about you. And only if there's someone who knows something about you there is that even a possibility. If you're on the beach, it's because you're laying out and you look good in the sun. That's why someone comes up and talks to you. Unless something happens, you accidentally trip over someone, oh, then there's another interaction. But any intentional initiation of an interaction is being caused because of visually seeing the person and saying they look like someone I want to talk to. It may be uh, a purely sexual attraction. It may be simply that they look interesting. It may be based on the clothes they're wearing. Maybe you're wearing a t-shirt that has the name of a band or an anime show that someone's really interested in, and that initiates a conversation. But it has to be physical, and this doesn't mean men finding women, although that is obviously the vast majority of how public new strangers interact. But it could be women approaching men. It could be women approaching women, men approaching men. It doesn't matter. In all cases, that physical look is what has to initiate. There's no other option. If you're on Tinder, there's nothing except a photo of what you don't even know is a real person. That could be a bot. That could be a stolen picture. It could be a deep fake. You don't know. All you have is what that person looks like in very little detail, right? <clears throat> if you're dealing with any dating site, same thing. If you're dealing with someone sitting at the bar and you walk up and you want to talk to them, same thing. You have nothing else to work with. So if you're wondering why it has to be physical, well, where could there be an alternative? There's no other way. Now, a lot of times, and we're going to talk about this in other episodes, you'll hear girls be like, well, why isn't the guy interested in me for something else based on my profile? And the profile is then empty. It's literally nothing but a photograph. The idea that it is 100% physical is enforced in that situation where there's nothing but a photo. There is literally nothing to go on right? That photo is 100% of the knowledge of that person. And they don't even know it's a real person, but we'll touch on that some other time. It's really important that there's no alternative to that physicality. That's all we have to work with under normal circumstances. Now, of course, there are exceptions and we can, we can name them really easily. Friends you've had since childhood, people you know from school, co-workers, uh, someone you met at church or that you know through mutual friends and those types of interactions where you're meeting someone and you get talking and you didn't get introduced because you saw them and said, I want to be introduced to them based on their, their look, but because someone said, hey, I bet you two are going to get along or you're members of the same club or you just know each other automatically because of something you had to work on together and you discover that, well, hey, uh, you know, we get along really well. Maybe, maybe we should, you know, think about something more. That's great. That stuff does exist. But those people are a limited pool and you can't go out and intentionally find more of them very easily. Sure, you can join a club or go to wine club or, you know, go somewhere where you hope to run into new people. But in most of those cases where you go and do those things, you're still only going to generally interact 
with people that you then walk up and intentionally talk to. And guess what? We're right back to just finding a different pool of people to to be physically attracted to first, right? So it's very hard to intentionally grow your pool. Yes, of course, the more you get out and just do things in public, the more opportunity for someone to introduce you, start a conversation, get to know someone, and then discover that you like them, great. But realistically, 99% of the humans that you will meet if you are intentionally dating or whether you're passively, right? Women dressing attractively or men, um, or people going out and looking for someone dressed attractively. In either case, it is a intentional initiation based on physicality and there is no way around it. You just can't intentionally avoid that aspect of that's how we meet people. And it makes sense, right? We need to be physically attracted to someone. And so having that threshold of being sexually attracted to someone as a starting point is logical. It's an extremely easy bar to uh, to cross, right? We can measure, is this person attractive enough that if I like other things about them that we'll be okay? Yes, I can simply look at someone and say, she's awfully attractive. I don't have to worry about whether I find her attractive later because I already know. Now I have to find out if she's interesting. I have no way to find out if she's interesting or smart or friendly or we get along or we have shared interests. I can't know that until I talk to her. But I can sweep my eyes across the bar and know which girls are attractive and which ones are not that I think it makes sense for me to attempt to find out more. That's it. And every girl, every time, and this goes for guys too, but every time you dress up and try to look really nice and hope someone talks to you, you are hoping that the physicality is the thing that initiates a conversation. So this is not one-sided. This is not whoever is going out and introducing themselves to someone attractive at the bar. It's every time you make the effort to look attractive and sit at the bar, that is the inviting that physical interaction. There's simply nothing else to expect. We all lie to ourselves because it sounds horrible. Society has taught us to hate this based on physical thing, but it doesn't provide us an alternative because it can't. This is the thing that makes sense. So we feel badly about it and we lie to ourselves. Well, I didn't, I didn't talk to her because she was hot. I talked to her because I felt she had a shared interest in, you know, Lord of the Rings. No, you didn't. You had no reason to think that that could be true. You may have hoped that was true because you like Lord of the Rings, but you didn't have any reason to think so. What you saw was someone who was attractive. And so you hoped that that attractive person also liked Lord of the Rings. That is how it works. But we do anything we can to lie to ourselves because it sounds horrible when you go to a party and someone says, oh, how did you guys meet? Well, she was hot and I approached her at the bar and uh, I was hoping, right, that we could have sex based on nothing but the way she looked. Really? That's awful. What is it? What kind of establish, you know, what kind of basis for a relationship is that? It's the only one you have in most cases. So that is how it works. You may get lucky. You may have someone in your friend group that you're willing to move to the next level in a relationship. That's great. Hopefully that can happen for you. That's generally how the best relationships are going to happen, but they aren't how the majority can happen. It just mathematically doesn't work. So much about relationships come down to math. There's things we all want and they just aren't enough people in those situations to be possible in that way, at least for most people. So we have to look for what is realistic and physicality simply makes that true. And evolutionarily, it makes sense as well. You go back to caveman times, there may not have been any conversation and that stuff may not have mattered much, right? The reasons that physicality are important mostly have to do with survivability and from a distance, right? Women had to be identified by men from a distance, both as someone that needed to be protected, but also as someone that needed to be mated with or that was an opportunity for mating. And so, because you may not have been close together and you couldn't call, you couldn't look at them up on Tinder, right? They didn't have computers. You had to see from a distance, oh, she's curvy, she's attractive. I'm gonna go attempt to mate because that is what made humanity happen, right? People mating, having kids and carrying on the gene pool. It's that simple. Right? It sucks sometimes to reduce humanity to an attempt to carry on the gene pool, but fundamentally that's how it works. And that's why finding someone physically attractive is what matters most, no matter how much we wish it didn't. And it's also why physicality is what drove that, right? Because it, it we are attracted to healthy, right? It is the ability to have 
uh, a, a viable offspring that we can then protect and raise to be old enough to have children of their own. That is the aspect of physicality that attracts us because all attraction fundamentally comes down to we are designed to want to have children that are viable. It sounds so basic, but relationships at their core are effectively very basic and we will do much better and be happier in our relationships when we accept that those things are true, stop lying to ourselves, get past that threshold and go, oh, it is 100% acceptable to look at someone and be, I wanna to talk to that person because they're attractive. I hope that person talks to me because they think I'm attractive because I think they're attractive. All those things are fine. That is a completely legitimate reason for starting a relationship. It is a horrible basis for the being the only thing in a relationship, right? Move past it. See if you have interest. See if you're compatible. See if you get along. See if you have shared moral values and ethics. Those things are what makes a good relationship long-term. But to initiate, yeah, it's going to be physical almost all the time. Just accept that and be happy that there's more past that and that that's not all we have to work with. All right, leave your comments below. Ask more questions. Uh, let's have a conversation. I want to know what you all think. And please like and subscribe. And I will see you with the next question.